Have you ever wondered how shame impacts our mental health? It's a question that might lead us down unexpected paths. Let's begin by exploring shame itself. This emotion, deeply ingrained in our psyche, is not as straightforward as it might seem. To understand shame, we turn to the groundbreaking effect theory of psychologist Sylvan Tompkins. At the heart of this theory lies an often overlooked emotion, interest. Interest, according to Tompkins, is one of nine basic hardwired affects that drive our actions and shape our reality. But what happens when our inherent interest, the drive that propels us to engage with and make sense of the world, is interrupted or violated? According to Tompkins, this is when we experience shame. It's a visceral, physiological response that precedes our conscious awareness. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of shame, we uncover a more complex form of it known as derivative shame. Now let's unravel the concept of derivative shame. This term refers to a secondary form of shame that bubbles up when we ruminate on and internalize the initial physiological response of shame. Picture it as a second wave, a potent echo of the original feeling. Derivative shame is not just an echo though, it's a transformation, a mutation that takes the primal emotion and turns it into something more complex and potentially destructive. Imagine, if you will, an interruption of your interest, your passion. This interruption triggers a visceral feeling of shame. Now, instead of addressing this feeling and moving on, you start to dwell on it, dissect it, and before you know it, you've birthed derivative shame. This new form of shame perpetuates a cycle of self-criticism, avoidance and disengagement from our true interests. Derivative shame, therefore, creates a cognitive trap that can have severe effects on our mental health. But how does derivative shame create a cognitive trap? Well, let's delve into that. Derivative shame, born from the initial physiological response of shame, becomes a cognitive issue when we dwell on it. We ruminate, replaying the moment of shame over and over again, building entire narratives around it. This fixation on negative experiences and their associated feelings is like a hamster wheel of self-criticism and avoidance. The more we dwell, the deeper we sink into this cognitive pitfall. This rumination disconnects us from our authentic interests and motivations. We become so consumed with our perceived shortcomings that we lose sight of our inherent curiosity and drive, the very things that make us human. But here's the catch. Cognitive behavioral approaches, the go-to solution for many, may not fully address these underlying emotional disruptions. They focus on changing thought patterns. But what about the emotions that fuel these thoughts? Cognitive behavioral approaches may not fully address the underlying emotional disruptions that give rise to derivative shame. So what does this mean for mental health treatment? The importance of aligning with our innate interests and understanding the role of affect holds significant implications for therapeutic approaches. Instead of focusing solely on cognitive techniques, such as changing thought patterns and beliefs, therapists could place an increased emphasis on exploring and reconnecting with our authentic interests. This involves identifying the emotional disruptions that give rise to derivative shame and working to rectify the interruption of interest that initiates this cycle. By doing so, we can address the root cause of derivative shame rather than merely its cognitive manifestations. This shift in focus can potentially lead to more effective, sustainable outcomes, enabling individuals to reorient themselves, reconnect with their innate curiosity and drive, and ultimately live more fulfilling lives. Embracing the primacy of effect, as illuminated by Tompkins and Nathanson, we gain a deeper understanding of the emotional forces that shape our behavior and experiences.